Welcome back to Virtual Reality. My name is Thomas and you're watching Voodoo VR. Today I have a special for you. There are a lot of uh, virtual reality headsets and um, this video is about 10 things that I would improve for the current generation of VR headsets. So to make them even better, what is my opinion? What 10 things would I improve? Of course, I want to have your opinion as well. What is the thing that you dislike for the current generation of VR headsets? Write it in the comments below. But first start, let's start the video now. You can find everything about VR and AR on this channel thanks to my sponsors, Woodgirls VR, Opperman Events, Peter Wasmeyer, Andy DeFelser, VR Ambassador, Virtual Escape and Adams Group. Let's have some fun with the video and let's go. Voodoo.de Okay guys, so let's start with the 10 points here. The first thing is I would definitely um, enlarge the field of view. So we have some headsets that already have a big field of view like uh, the Pimax headsets uh, or the Star VR1 or the Xtal, but this is not for normal users. I want a big field of view for really all the virtual reality headsets that will appear in the future. And with a big field of view, I really mean 200 degrees horizontal field of view. Because when I look with my own eyes, I can see the whole room here and I want this in virtual reality. So the first point is a big field of view. The second thing, I would reduce the screen door effect uh, or even so that we don't even see the screen door effect. There are some headsets that already have no screen door effect like the Pimax 8KX or the HP Reverb G2, but then we need a really strong PC. And for this, I would on first line reduce the screen door effect with a higher resolution, but at the second, uh, at the second thing, I would even re uh, reduce the performance that is needed. And we can do that um, by integrating dynamic foveated rendering with integrated eye tracking. That means all the, display, uh, the screen is only sharp where you look at. All the other stuff in the uh, surroundings is uh, blurry and is not rendered with the full quality. And that's cool. We don't see that with our eyes, but it reduces the um, needed performance a lot. So that is the second thing. The third thing would be um, the lenses. So um, we need big lenses, of course, for the big field of view, um, but we also need a good sweet spot and um, no distortion. So we have uh, very big lenses with the Pimax headset, but uh, at the edges they have a little bit distortion and that's disturbing for um, many people. Also with some headsets like the Reverb G2, we have a small for some people we have a small sweet spot and everything around is blurry and uh, both things are not good. So I would say for the third thing that we have really clear lenses, big lenses without distortion. That would be really awesome. The fourth thing is reducing the weight. So we still have a lot of headsets that have over 800 grams and it's too heavy. Yeah, so I would uh, wish that the new headsets will be much lighter. I, I would talk about 300 to 400 gram and that would be really awesome. Just that it feels like a feather on your head, like nothing. That would be great. And the uh, fifth thing that is uh, yeah, uh, pretty the same, uh, reducing the size. So. As you can see, the, the, for example, the Pimax headsets here, they are much too big. Uh, so um, it would be really great if we have a really small device that uh, is light and um, that just feels very comfortable. Um, that you don't look like an idiot <laughs> when you wear that. And that would be really great. Uh, it could be possible uh, with some new technologies. Uh, I've seen some stuff from Apple um, that they reduce the distance between the uh, eyes and the lenses. So um, um, the space is smaller, 
we can reduce the size of the headset, but uh, it's also possible to insert prescription lenses for people that are wearing glasses. And that would be really great. Or to work with some uh, mirror um, um, screens or mirror displays inside the headset to reduce the size of the headset. That would be really great. The um, sixth thing is wireless. Wireless. Um, I would, I would uh, like to have all the upcoming VR headsets wireless. And I mean really wireless without some effort. There are some um, VR headsets that are wireless. I mean the Oculus Quest 2 is a standalone headset. Uh, of course it's wireless because the, you don't need a PC or a console or whatever. Uh, but I mean like something like the Valve Index or the Pimax or the Reverb, I want to use them wireless without any effort. Um, perhaps you remember the Vive wireless adapter. So we, so we could use the, the Vive um, wireless, but that was not easy. So we have to uh, insert a PCI Express card into the PC, an antenna, uh, another a base station, another router, a LAN, a, a LAN card uh, or whatever. And that's just too, uh, too much effort. I, I want that just plug and play. Insert uh, some whatever and then it should work. That would be really great. Just perhaps an USB dongle, zack, and then it works. That, that would be great. So wireless without effort, that would be great. The um, seventh thing is uh, I want all the VR headsets to uh, have cross-platform support. Standard cross-platform support. That means when some developers release um, a game on all the platforms, I want to play with my friends. So for example, my friend has a PlayStation VR and I have an Oculus Quest 2 and another friend has a Pimax. And I want to play with them in one game. And this is something that is really important to, um, to get the VR community together. And I want this with all the virtual reality hardware and games so that they are compatible between each other. There are some games that uh, can do that. I want to thank Ubisoft uh, here uh, because they are doing that all the time. For example, with uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, um, everybody, you can play it on all the VR headsets and you can even play together uh, with different VR headsets. And that's something I really uh, like. So the seventh thing would be cross-platform support. The eighth thing is reducing motion sickness. So there are still some people that uh, wear a VR headset and get motion sick and that's bad. So a lot of people get motion sick, especially I, uh, I think there was um, uh, something, uh, a research that says that a woman, a woman um, are more, uh, they get more motion sick than men. And that's bad. So we need some something that reduces the motion sickness, so that all all the girls uh, can play um, v VR as well without any problems. And there are some patents, for example, by Sony, that uh, integrated some cameras or sensors um, to scan your face or even your pulse or whatever, and then can react. Uh, to for the soft bed, so reduce the field of view uh, for, for some seconds or reduce the speed of the scene for some seconds. So with some sensors, uh, the software can react on the behavior of your body. And that's great. That's something that I want in all the VR headsets to reduce motion sickness. The ninth thing uh, is um, innovative controls. So the most innovative controls are still the Valve Index controllers, but they are uh, really old. <laughs> they are really old. I have them for uh, one and a half years and they are really old. <laughs> so we need uh, more cool stuff. What I want is gloves. 
Yeah, we have thousands gloves, thousands of gloves on the, on this planet that can be used in VR, but they are only compatible with two games or whatever. So I want these gloves with haptic feedback, but the most important thing would be that they are compatible with all games. So for now, um, the developers have to implement the support for all the different gloves and that sucks. So it, it, it doesn't make sense for the developers uh, if only five people on this planet have these gloves and they have to implement the support for the, these five people. So um, I would like that we have gloves that are really compatible with all virtual reality games. Even with, uh, for example, real-time strategy games so that you can point with your index finger and have something like a, a mouse pointer or even you can... Um, grab the, um, the troops or put them somewhere and also the guns or whatever with gloves and that would be really awesome. So and the last thing of course is the price. <laughs> the price is very important so we have really expensive VR headsets like the um, Pimax headsets, the Vive Pro, the Valve Index <clears throat> and there I would like to reduce the price even more so perhaps that we can get uh, Oculus Quest 3 for 200 bucks so everybody can afford that um, but also some high-end VR headsets for like 600 euros um, that would be great if we can reduce the price even more. So these were the 10 things that I would improve in the future VR headsets but to be honest that was 10 uh, points that were related to the hardware. But there is one thing that is even more important than all the hardware stuff and this is the software. We can have a perfect headset with 230 degrees field of view uh, with no screen door effect, wireless and all the stuff but that doesn't make sense when we don't have games for that. So I want the developers to produce more AAA content. And I don't mean uh, bad ported PC games, I mean really VR games like Half-Life Alyx. This is the game everybody should be focused on and produce more stuff like that. That would be great. So I have a video that shows the, in my opinion, best VR games for now and you can find it now in the info cards and in the description and in the first pinned comment and as well as in the outro, the best VR games for all platforms. That is uh, worth seeing. And the last thing I want to tell you, my favorite three virtual reality headsets. So for beginners, I would definitely recommend the Oculus Quest 2. We can play it without a PC, without console, just stand alone, but we can also connect it to the PC via Oculus Link. Then the second uh, thing is the Valve Index. Um, headset and the third thing is the Pimax 8KX that's a really high-end headset so if you want to buy one of these um, headsets you can find the link in the description and in the first pinned comment that would be great if you could support me or via this affiliate links uh, you will not pay anything extra that would be great so guys I hope you give me thumbs up and if you like to support me you can get behind the scenes videos only one buck per month via Patreon or YouTube membership that would be really great so you can see all of my studio and my personal um, um, opinion about stuff and early access to some videos that would be great. Check out the link in the description and the first pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time in virtual reality. See ya! Voodoo the